Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson on how to highlight chord changes when improvising with functional harmony. Now really quickly, if you don't know what functional harmony is, that backing track that you heard me play over in the intro was in the key of D major and it contains chords one from D major, which is of course D major, chord five, which is A major, chord six, B minor, and chord four, G major. So all of those chords belong to the key of D major. There's no chord in that progression that does not belong to the key, that is not um, derived from the notes of the D major scale. And you can hear that they all fit well together. None of them sound jarring or weird or out of place. They all belong to the key of D major. So that's basically in a nutshell what functional harmony is. Now what most guitarists do and what I certainly did when I first started out improvising is I learned a bunch of scales and I learned how to use them over various different chords and what I would end up doing and this is a problem that I see with a lot of younger guitar players or just newer guitar players in general is They'll enjoy improvising with scales for a bit of time, but as time goes by, they'll start to feel like they're not being as musical as they could be when they're improvising. They're not coming up with anything really melodic, um, and it just kind of sounds like they're running up and down a scale. And I, as I said, I have definitely felt like that myself, especially when I was you know, first getting started with improvisation. You know, you'll end up playing things like this. And to me, that just sounds like I'm running up and down a scale. It doesn't necessarily sound bad, but when you're playing over a chord progression like the one that you heard in the backing track, where the chords are changing, it's good to be able to highlight those chord changes because when you're able to do that, it sounds to the listener like you are aware of what's happening harmonically and it sounds like you know how to improvise rather than just run up and down a bunch of scale positions. So if a student came to me with this problem where they'd learned a bunch of scales, they learned how to play them all over the neck, they could comfortably play them but they didn't know how to make music with them and they didn't know how to create melodic guitar solos, what I would tell them to do is to learn how to use triads in their lead playing. So what is a triad? Well, a triad is a really simple concept. It's a three note chord, okay? Tri meaning three, obviously. So major and minor chords in our most basic form just contain three notes. They contain a root, third, and fifth. If you don't know what a root, third, and fifth means, um, go watch one of my earlier lessons I talk about intervals quite a lot. Those are intervals, by the way. I talk about them quite a lot in the other videos on my channel, so I'm not gonna waste anyone's time by explaining them here because some of my older subscribers might stop watching me if they keep hearing me talk about this. So yeah, just go and watch an older video of mine. I'll put links to something somewhere, maybe in the description, um, that talks about intervals. But basically, a major triad contains a root, a major third, and a perfect fifth. A minor triad contains a root, minor third, and a perfect fifth. Okay, so let's look at that in the context of just a basic D major chord, a basic open D chord. We're just gonna look at these three strings, so the G, B, and high E strings. So this is a major triad, okay? We have the root, major third, and perfect fifth. Now let's look at the minor version of that. Let's look at a D minor triad. Okay, we have root, minor third, perfect fifth. So major, root, major third, perfect fifth, minor, root, minor third, perfect fifth. So what I'm gonna eventually do in this video is demonstrate an actual solo that uses triads as an improvisational tool to highlight the chord changes, okay? So I'm gonna be mixing in triads with major pentatonic and major scale licks so that I'm actually highlighting the chord changes. But before I get to that, 
let's talk a bit more about why triads are so useful. So one of the reasons why triads are so useful is because they come in various different inversions. Now, an inversion is basically the order of the notes from low to high. So you have three types of inversion. You have a root position, which has the root on the bottom, meaning the root in the base, the third in the middle, and the fifth on top. Then you have a first inversion, which has the third on the bottom, the fifth in the middle, and the root on top. And lastly, you have a second inversion, which has fifth on the bottom, root in the middle, and third on top. So let's look at that. Here is a root position D major triad. Root, major third, perfect fifth. Now let's look at the first inversion. Third, uh, sorry, major third, perfect fifth, root. And lastly, the second version, second inversion, which we had down here. I'll play it up here, actually. We have the perfect fifth, root, major third. Okay, so you have three different inversions. And the same goes for minor triads, by the way. Root, first inversion, and second inversion. The difference being that the third is actually a minor third, of course. Now, another thing that's cool about triads is that these inversions can be found all over the fretboard on all four string sets. So what I just demonstrated here with these D major triads, those were all on the first string set, which is the G, B, and high E strings. The second would be the D, G, and B. Third would be A, D, G. And the fourth would be low E, A, and D. So you can find these triad inversions all over the neck on all four string sets. Now, before I demonstrate the solo that uses a mix of major pentatonic, major scale, and triads to highlight the chord changes of the progression, before I get to that, let me just show you the actual inversions that the licks in the solo are based on so that you understand what's happening. So, over the D major chord, I'm going to play a lick that is based around this triad inversion here. And that is the first inversion D major triad. So check out the uh, triad diagram for that. Then over the A major, I'm gonna play a first inversion A major triad on the second string set. Again, check out the triad diagram. Then over the B minor, I'm gonna play this. So that is a second inversion B minor triad on the first string set. And lastly, for the G major, I'm going to play this, which is a root position G major triad on the third string set. So in the solo, I'm not just going to simply play these triads like this. Because that doesn't sound very creative. What I am going to do is create licks that are based around those triads, and you'll hear that in the solo. Now, real quick, before I get to the solo, just want to say for anyone that is actually interested in learning more about triads, because I understand that this is a very brief description of what they are and how you can apply them. If you are interested in learning a lot more about triads, how they're constructed, how to use them in rhythm playing as well as lead playing, um, as well as a bunch of other improvisational tools that you can use to become a better improviser and a better guitar player in general. If you are interested in that, check the link in the description. I have 50% off coupons for my online course, Bulletproof Guitar Player. You can pick it up for like $20 or £20. And it basically contains around four hours worth of content that teaches you fundamental theory that you can actually apply to your guitar playing. So everything that you learn in the course that is theory related can actually be applied to your guitar playing. And I do actually show you how to apply it in the video lessons. So if you're interested in becoming a better improviser and a better player in general, then check that link in the description and feel free to read up about the course and what it entails. Anyway, let's get to this solo. So I'm gonna play it to speed to start with. 
and then after that I'm going to slow it way down put the tab on screen so that you can read along and get the get the licks down yourself and as well as that I'm going to put the triad diagrams on screen along with the tab so that you can see what triad inversions the licks are based off. Okay, so there you have it guys. Before I go, I just want to say one last tip for using triads in lead playing. You don't always have to highlight every single chord. The solo that you just learned, that is basically, um, that was basically written to demonstrate the use of triads. So it was written with the intention of demonstrating how you can highlight chord changes with triads. If I'm playing over a chord progression like that live, I'm probably not going to play exactly like that. I'll do a few triad licks here and there, but sometimes I might just want to blow off some steam and do a big, you know, major pentatonic. I will, you know, I want to do some big run like that and not necessarily highlight every single chord change that is happening. So use them tastefully like anything you know it's a good idea to highlight the chords now and then but don't do it don't feel like you have to do it every single time you take a solo okay i'm gonna wrap things up now i hope that you guys learned something today i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to see more stuff like this just let me know drop a comment below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up click subscribe below so that you don't miss any future content and I will see you all very soon.